Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. Another beautiful Sunday morning here in Arleta. I want to share a couple of announcements with you just before we move into our time of praise and worship with the worship team this morning. And it has to do with the Easter season. We are really excited about our Good Friday service and our Easter Sunday morning service. Uh, there will be an illustrated sermon in both services, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and it will include a dramatic presentation. And so I want to invite you to come. We're looking forward to a great time together. And again, that's on Good Friday, 7 o'clock, and then on Easter Sunday morning, that will begin at 10.30 a.m. And we're excited. We have some special events planned for the boys and girls, and each of them that comes will be getting a free Easter bag, and they'll be hearing the greatest story ever told about the greatest one who ever lived that offers the greatest gift that's ever been offered. And we're excited. It's going to be a great day here on Easter Sunday. Well, listen, let's just turn our hearts toward the Lord now as the worship team comes to lead us in praise and worship. And let's worship Him with all of our hearts. Uh, don't hesitate to lift your hands. You might be by yourself in your home this morning. Lift your hands. You may want to clap them. You may want to shout, Hallelujah. Go for it. This is a time in which we can praise and worship the Lord. And then we'll be joining again for the Word. And we'll be looking at the subject matter of the farmer and faith. Let's worship the Lord now together.
Trust in his righteousness alone And for we stand before the throne Christ Christ Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us in praise and worship. And it's always a good thing to offer praise and thanksgiving to the Lord from the depths of our heart for all that he's done for us. Well, this morning I want to share in the subject matter of faith. And I want the title of my message this morning is Farming in Faith. And I want us to look at some principles that will activate our faith in, in, which will cause us to see tremendous things done in our lives. Now, in, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says, As long as the earth endures, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. And there are laws that I want to look at this morning, these principles, these laws, that will activate our faith. And as our faith is activated, I'm confident that we'll see God do the supernatural in our hearts and in our lives. And so we're going to look at the, the laws of seed time, and there are laws that have to do with the harvest as well. In Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7, it says this here. It says, Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. Whatever a person plants, and this is a great concept for us to harness, to embrace, whatever a person plants, he might harvest. No, I know you're probably shaking your head and saying, no, Pastor Sammy, it doesn't say that. It says this here, don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What every person plants, it says, he, not that he might, it says, he will harvest that there. And so as we spend some time together this morning, I want to look at the laws of the harvest, several of them this morning. Now, this is important because if you ignore the laws of sowing and reaping, it will impact your life tremendously in a negative sense. But on the flip side, if you wisely, if you wisely use the laws of sowing and reaping, sowing and harvesting, your life will be tremendously blessed by it, and you will see things come to fruition in your life that you never thought could happen. Uh, you use these laws that I'm talking about that we'll be teaching this morning. Literally, you can use them really literally in every single area of your life. You can be a great farmer. You can be a poor farmer. But you can be a great farmer and plant by planting in faith. Now, you can use the laws of sowing and reaping in, in literally every single area of your life. You can use it in, uh, in relationships. Uh, you can use these laws in, in your health. What you sow is what you're going to reap. You can use it in your finances. You can use it in your career. Learning how to plant wisely in your career and how to harvest wisely in your career. You can learn these uh, principles. So the point that I want to make this morning is this here, uh, before I get into the laws of the harvest, is, listen, whatever, listen, Whatever you need more of in your life, whatever you need more of in your life, you need 
to plant in faith. If you feel like you need more appreciation, then start appreciating others. Plant seeds of appreciation. If you need more talent, then uh, start using the little bit of talent that God has given to you now and watch it develop, watch it grow. If you need more money, um, start planting. If you need more energy, whatever you need more of, you begin to plant it, those seeds, and you'll see them grow. You'll see the fruit of those things there. So let me go through some of these laws this morning with us together. The first law that I want to look at is, is knowing this here. Everything, everything starts with a seed. That's the first law of the harvest. That's the first law of the harvest. Everything starts with a seed. It doesn't just happen. No, you plant seeds. In Genesis chapter 1, God says this here. God said, let the land have seed-bearing plants and trees and bear fruit with seed in it, according to their varieties. Uh, listen. We might be asking the question this morning, well, Pastor Sammy, okay, I, I hear this thing about planting a seed, but uh, what, is this, what is the seed? Well, it's this here. A seed, you might want to write this down even. A seed is anything. A seed is anything valuable that I give away. When you give away praise, praise is valuable. Uh, it's valuable to you, and it's, and it, 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 it's a seed you can plant and it'll, it'll grow. If, when you plant or give away advice, that's planting. You're giving something away that's valuable. If you give away some of your time, you invested in teaching a class, or you're involved, involved in Rangers, or the Impact Girls Club, or our Lead a Youth, for instance, uh, or, or one of the outreaches. Listen, if you, if you plant, if you give away your time, which is valuable, uh, God will multiply your time. Same thing with money. Uh, same thing with your experience. These are all valuable things. And as you give them, in essence, you're planting them and you're giving them away. So any, a seed is anything I give away in order to help somebody else. That's what it, what it means. Words can be and are seeds that we invest and that we give away. So let me ask a question this morning. Let me ask this here. What kind of seeds are you planting today? What kind of seeds are you planting in your relationships? What kind of seeds are you planting in your household, in the workplace? What kind of seeds are you planting? So we want to remember that. The first thing is nothing starts, nothing begins without a seed. Your miracle, uh, that answer to prayer that you desperately need, listen, it, uh, it starts with planting that seed. Begin to, to invest in, uh, in prayer. Well, the second thing is, is this here, is remembering this, this principle of the harvest. Nothing happens until the seed is planted. Nothing happens until the seed is planted. John chapter 12, verse number 24, Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat, that is a seed, unless it, it falls and is buried in the ground, it cannot reproduce. But if it dies, it will produce much fruit. Can you uh, imagine that for a minute. Imagine the farmer going to the feed store, he buys a, a sack of, of seeds, and he takes it home, and he puts it in his, uh, his barn, and then he forgets about it, and he never plants it. Can he anticipate getting anything in return? No. He's got to plant the seed. You know, I this, this last year, I've, I've mentioned it before at, at uh, in one of our services that um, prior to the time we moved, I, would, I bought some seeds to plant, some tomato seeds. And uh, as you know, I think it was last June, last April, May, uh, actually it was in May, we moved from Palmdale to Canyon Country. While we were getting things, while I was packing things up in the garage, I came across, you guessed it, I came across a packet of tomato seeds. Now, can I have expected and anticipated those seeds to grow? Not as long as they're in that packet. Uh, listen, the, uh, the principle here is nothing happens until I plant the seed. Nothing happens until I plant the seed. Jesus said, the kingdom of God 
is like someone who plants a seed in the ground. Night and day, whether the person is asleep or awake, the seed will still grow. But that person should not know how it grows. But we do know this, when you plant a seed, you give away something valuable, and you invest in somebody's life, you're planting a seed. Well, the third thing, the third principle, law of the harvest, is this here. When I have a need, I should plant a seed. When I have a need, I should plant a seed. Do you have a need today? I want to encourage you. Plant a seed. I've never heard of a farmer who would go out and look at his field that he has. There may be acres of land that he looks out at it, and I don't know of a farmer in the, in the, in the world that would go out and look at this barren field and go, God, I want you to make, to make stuff grow. I want you to make the seed grow. I think God's response to him would be, where's the seed? The farmer might go, well, it's in the barn. I haven't planted it. To which the Lord would respond and say, I can't do anything with, without the seed. Plant the seed. Plant the seed, and I'll cause it to grow. So when I have a need, I should plant a seed. A, a, a farmer should never complain about not having a harvest. He should never complain when he goes out and looks at that barren field if he hasn't planted any seed at that time. I want to move on to the fourth, the fourth law of the harvest, and it's this here. Whatever I plant is what I will reap. And that's an important one for us to, to really just sit on for just a second here. Whatever I plant is what I will reap. So if a farmer plants a field of beans, what crop should he expect to get? If he plants uh, tomato seeds, what can he anticipate harvesting? Well, I think tomatoes would be our, our answer. See, this is an, a... a uh, really a, 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 a law of the universe. It's a law of the universe. It's, it's the way that God has set up things. It's the way he has made things. What you plant is what you will reap. And that has some, some really great complementary points to it, or it can be very negative. The, the, uh, what we read before, Galatians 6, 7, says you'll reap exactly what you planted exactly what you planted. And so let me just show you some, uh, some, some scriptures here. Let's read this, some negative examples of seeds that are planted. In Job, Job chapter 4, verse 8 says, People who plant trouble harvest it. Let's look at Proverbs 22, verse number 8. Whoever sows sin reaps weeds. Proverbs 22, uh, 8 also says, Those who plant seeds of injustice will reap a harvest of disaster. Hosea chapter 10, verse 13 says, You planted wickedness, and now you're going to reap evil. Matthew chapter 7, verse 2 says, Whatever measure you use to judge others will be used to measure how we are judged. Uh, I, I tell you, when we read these kinds of passages, and we, uh, we meditate on them for just a little bit, it, uh, it becomes really one of those hinged moments in our lives, a defining moment in our lives. It's like, hey, wait a minute. The stuff I do, the, uh, the, my conduct has tremendous impact because my conduct, my life, I'm always planting, always planting, whether it's good or bad, but I'm always planting, and I'm going to reap a harvest. You're going to reap a harvest. Now let me show you some positive examples of that as well. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 18, it says, The one who sows righteousness will reap a sure reward. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12 says, Plant good seeds of righteousness. Here it is again, it's planting, planting, planting. Plant good seeds of righteousness and you'll harvest a crop of my love. James chapter 3, verse 18 says, Peacemakers plant seeds of peace, and they reap a harvest of goodness. I tell you what, it doesn't take us long to, uh, to really grasp this, to, for it to really click in our heads, to say, hey, 
there's something to sowing and reaping. Galatians chapter 6, 7 and 8 says again, the person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others and ignoring God, harvests a, wee, a crop of weeds. And that's all he'll have to show for in his life. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's Spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. I want to look at the next uh, law of the harvest, and it's number the fifth thing is, listen, uh, I always reap in a different season than when I sow. I always reap in a different season than when, when I sow. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, there's a time for everything. There's a season for every activity under heaven. A time to plant, which is now. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to scatter and a time to gather. Fruit ripens gradually. Fruit ripens gradually. So you plant the seed, that which is valuable. You plant the seed and, uh, and you're patient. You wait and God will cause that seed to, to blossom, to come, to come to fruition. And you'll see the fruit of that there. Well, the, the, uh, the sixth thing is you've got to be patient and not give up, like we're just saying. Be patient. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9 says this here. Let us not get tired of doing what is right, for after a while we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. The seventh law of the harvest is I always, and listen to this, I always reap more than I sow. It's a law of the harvest. You can find it from the, from the book of Genesis all the way through the, through the Bible to the book of Revelation. You will always reap more than what you sow. You know, when we lived in Morgan Hill, my folks, they lived next door to us. And my dad uh, happened to be planting a garden in his backyard. And one of the things that he, one of the, uh, the crops that he planted was sunflower. And so he planted a sunflower seed in the ground. He watered it, cultivated it. And you know what's interesting about that one seed? You probably know what I'm going to say because you probably have seen a sunflower in full blossom. There are hundreds, countless uh, numbers of seeds that come up as a result of that one seed that was planted. And so I want you to know this, this, this morning is that you're going to always reap more than what you sow. Always. Mark chapter 4, verse number 8 says this here. Some seed fell in good soil, and it grew up, and it produced a crop multiplying. Great word. It multiplied, multiplying 30, 60, even 100 times. And so, again, this law of the harvest can work for you, or it can work against you. Listen, let's plant good seeds. Let's plant good seeds, valuable seed, and expect a great harvest. Well, the eighth thing is, I increase, I, it's really an answer to a question. Well, how do I increase my harvest? How do I get a greater harvest? Well, that's where this, what this law says. Law number eight, uh, I will increase my harvest by planting more seed. So the farmer he looks out at the filled field that he has, and, you know, how much of a harvest does this farmer want? Well, it, it's, it's indicative of how much seed he has purchased and how much seed that he plants. If he plants a little bit of seed, how much harvest is he going to reap? You're right, a little bit. If he grants an enormous amount of seed out on that field, what kind of harvest can he, can he anticipate? Well, a great harvest. And so the scripture says this here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, it says, Remember this, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will reap what? Sparingly. And whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each one should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a person 
who plants cheerfully. He, uh, he likes that. And so listen, um, it's, it's important for us, I think, to, to recognize this here. You know, who's responsible for the size of the harvest that you have in your life? Listen, you get to choose how big the harvest is in your life. You get to choose how much God blesses you. So listen, it puts us in a position where you can't blame anybody else, and I can't blame anybody else. Listen, it's all on me. I get to choose how much God will bless my life and how much God will increase the seeds that I plant. Proverbs 11, verse number 24 says, The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. That's a great passage of Scripture. It's Proverbs eleven twenty four. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Law number nine. Law number nine says, The more seed that I plant, the more God will give me. The more seed I plant, the more God will give me. You know, I had a, a, uh, an interesting situation happen to me this, uh, this past week. I met a uh, person at Starbucks, and we had a coffee. We had a nice time of fellowship and visiting together. And he, uh, the person I met with has, uh, has really just a, a beautiful family. And, uh, and when I was leaving, um, I said, I, I, I purchased, listen, I purchased a $10 Starbucks card for him to give to one of his children. And, uh, and it was 10 bucks. I thought, what, you know, not, not big. Didn't even give it a second thought. Well, after I did that, I, uh, in that meeting, I, I had to get my car smogged. So I took it to the, uh, to the, uh, the shop to get it smogged. And the guy smogged it. I chatted with him for a while. And, uh, when he was going to take my credit card for uh, payment on the bill, he said, you know what? He goes, I'm going to take $10 off of your bill today. And I said, well, hey, I said, thank you much. That's pretty nice of you, sir. And so ran my car, gave it back to me. I got in the car, and all of a sudden it came to me. I thought, wow, you know what? I planted a seed. I did something nice for someone, not anticipating anything in return. And here I am. Uh, God blessed me. And so really that gift card didn't even really cost me anything. Uh, by, uh, by, but it was, a, it was a seed that was planted. Uh, you know, that was one time I wasn't really even thinking about planting a seed, but it was in essence a, a seed that was planted. And I left and uh, lo and behold, that $10 came right back to me. Little did I know, but it was God. It was God honoring the law of the harvest. And as we close this morning... Um, what is it that you need? What is it that you need? What circumstance in your life that you have a tremendous need in? Is it uh, in an area of talent? Is it an area of time? How about finances? Is it an area of, of, the, uh, of, of, of your, your abilities that, that God's blessed you with? Um, what is, what's your need today? Is it a need for relationships? Um, what, what is the need? Listen, I want to encourage you this morning. To begin planting, to begin planting seeds. If uh, if you don't receive a lot of encouragement, start planting the seed of encouragement. Start encouraging people. You might say, "Well, listen, my finances are just they're just tight." Well, I would ask this here: Are you tithing? Are you giving to the Lord of what you've been blessed with? You start doing that, and you're going to see a return. You'll, the law, of the harvest, is it it works. I've seen it happen. Over and over and over again. What about your relationships? Say, so, well, yes, start planting. Start investing in relationships. Um, start encouraging people. Uh, start befriending people. And you'll see that the law of the harvest does work. Listen, let's, let's expect, let's expect this week, this week, start, starting today, right after our, our service time, begin to plant, start to make a plan. Say, I'm going to start to plant these types of seeds because this is the need in my life and God will be faithful to you. Let's look to the Lord. Father, thank you for our time this morning together and thank you for these valuable laws of the harvest. They work. 
because they're laws that you put into existence. And so, Lord, whatever needs may be out there this morning, I pray, oh God, that you'd move in their hearts. And as they plant seeds, Lord, that you, uh, as you are so good at, Lord, you're true to your word, you're true to your promises. Lord, may they experience a, a, a harvest in abundance, Lord, we pray. And we'll thank you, Lord, for it. Now bless, Lord, the rest of our day together. Today, Lord, whatever families are doing, Lord, I pray that you would bless our times this, this afternoon and this evening. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Now, I just want to encourage you. Be a good farmer. Be a good farmer. And watch the return come. God bless you, everyone.